welcome guys once again to episode 49 of black coffee and crime we thank you so much for joining us again this week uh last week we were we were on the sick and shut-in list y'all so brandy and i jackie and i we were all on the sick and shut-in list and we just really couldn't bring it to you last week we tried but we felt like dominoes one right after the other for various reasons um yeah but you know we back we back uh we're gonna bring you a story about pedro alonso lopez a colombian serial killer but of course before that we're always going to bring you church announcements um and some shenanigans that happened that we saw on uh, al gore's internet so thank you again for joining us this week um any church announcements? Do we need to go through the church announcements this week? Any uh, changes besides, you know, we was on the sick and shut-in list. And we really do thank the people who actually prayed for us last so week. Cute. So we did get, because we put it on Instagram that we weren't going to be able to do it uh, because we were on the sick and shut-in list. And so many of you were like, you know, get well, you know, you know on the prayer line for you. So we really do appreciate that. Because we weren't playing. Like, I, I, I said, hey, y'all want to, y'all going to do the show yourselves? Because I can't. And Daki was like, shit, I can't either. Brady was like, well, you know, I'm down. <laughs> so, it, it was it was 100% in agreement that that meeting would be tabled. So we do thank you for your patience and allowing us to come back this week. Um, so we're going to still talk about Pedro Lopez. Um, he's a really bad dude. I think he's probably worse than Ed Gein and uh, mm -hmm. Albert Fish put together. Uh <laughs> Fish. I mean, well, the Guinness, of, the Guinness of Book of World Records. They, I mean, they put him on there. At he, first. he wasn't yeah, so much into self abuse. No, no yeah, he, he didn't do the the self harm, but just his numbers and what he was doing. Yeah, he's he's probably the worst killer ever in the world. Um, numbers and um, victims. Um, victimology is, you know, the people on. Well, uh, I want to say something about that, uh, but I'll wait till we get into the story. Okay. All right. So, so uh, those those were our church announcements. So we just do thank you guys. So uh, even if y'all are in need of prayer, get on the prayer line. I see the Facebook or Instagram at Black Coffee Crime, and we will shout out those prayers to you. And we really do pray, y'all. We don't just be, you know, how black people are when they say, "I'm praying for you." That's really the prayer. That we, yeah, when black people say I'm yeah. praying for you, they just prayed for you. Like that's it. Like you're that not getting that. That was the prayer right there. That was the prayer. That was the prayer. So let me move this uh, mic so that y'all can really hear me because I want to make sure y'all hear me. All right. Um, let's see. So a lot of things happened in the last two weeks. Uh, one of the things was a couple of maybe a couple months ago, there was a young boy, uh, about ten years old who's his family had posted a video on social media of them cutting his hair um like really bullying him and physically abusing him because they said that he was gay um it was his sister his brother i think two sisters and his brother who abused him on camera and cut the word gay into his head. Then they go, they try to um, double back and go back and have him go on camera again and say that there was no abuse. They were just playing with him. Uh, well, they were arrested. So they were finally arrested for the verbal and physical abuse. I think he was either 10 or 11 years old. Um, in the story from the neighborhood, his name is not mentioned in the article from the neighborhood. But this happened in early June. Um, and within 24 hours of the video posting, the police were able to find the, the young child, place him in protective custody um, with the Georgia Division of Family and Children's Services. Um, yeah, this is, this is really horrible when... Um, we good? Okay. This is really horrible when things like this happen. Uh, especially the young kids um we the, the world that we live in now we're very accepting of differences in or sexual orientation the lbgtq plus plus i communities um very accepting of those things especially in younger kids you know like 
kids are expressing their sexuality younger, younger, which disturbs me. Not because they're expressing homosexuality, but just because the expression of sexuality, period. I don't really care which way the wind is blowing. It's just the fact that you have eight, nine year olds saying that I recognize my sexuality this early. And I'm like, just I, on mine. You don't have a sexuality. <laughs> right. That's, um, that's, that's a problem. I remember when my daughter was in high school, there was a, LGBT club at her school and there was so much parental opposition to this club she asked me to go to it she had some friends in the club so she wanted me to go because she was going to go to support I didn't care why she was in the club I was like all right I'll go so you know I was trying to get to the kids trying to explain to them from a parent's perspective that some parents are not going to understand homosexuality or otherness but then also some parents are not really concerned with that. They're just concerned with the fact that their kids are sexual at this point and they don't care. I didn't care. You know, I was like, I don't care who she loves or whatever. I just don't want her to love anybody right now. That's what makes me uncomfortable. So <laughs> you know, like that, that, that was it. That's what makes me uncomfortable. The fact that you're trying to love anybody exactly is my problem, you know? And, you know, but the, the kids are getting younger and younger. And I think me personally, for parents that really like show anger or, or, you know, any sort of, you know, um, I don't even know the word I want to use here, but any, you know, any sort of anger or push to say that the kids are wrong or that they're, you know, somehow uh, damaged or something for feeling this way. You're going to further damage them as adults because if you think they don't talk to you now, they're not going to talk to you when they have a real problem. You know what I'm saying? So it's hard when you have this 10, 11 year old kid and he's being beat down by his brothers and sisters <laughs> because he's gay. I mean, at that point, do you even realize? I don't even know if I realized at 10 what gay was. I didn't even really know what sexuality was at 10. But I guess we lived in a much different world different then we allowed our we were allowed to grow organically um, sorry this um so sorry did to you like right. skin or you didn't think about this 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 broadcast is brought to you by uh this wine is called redacted by Maybell wine <laughs> Cali. get you some down at the uh, farmer's market <laughs> the unsponsored um uh, plug but this is peach uh, pear and cherry wine, y'all. Good as hell. Sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, that sounds good. It does. It is. I, I was watching this TikTok, and um, you know they'll do um, like they'll do this thing with something that people aren't ready to talk about. If you talk about a type, you know, conversations. Mm -hmm. And I was watching last night, and this lady goes, uh, "The question was like, what is the conversation that some parents aren't ready to have?" or you have a child, you automatically know there is a high chance or a chance in general that your child may end up in the LGBTQ community. That's right. just the way it is. That's the risk you take as a parent. And if you're someone who is um, afraid of those type things, then maybe you something you really sit down and discuss in regards to having children. Because that's the chance that you're taking when you do that. And it sounds like it's crazy when you're saying it out loud, but when you really sit and think about it, when you really sit and just really think, that's just a possibility that you take. Yes. It is what it is. Because we're all individuals. And we're like, all gonna oh, that's really good. We are all going to feel differently. We're going to think differently. And the way I feel and think is not necessarily the way my child is going to feel and think, especially when it comes to something biological and something scientific and something very personal like sex. You know, you might have very Puritan Lutheran type parents who just have sex for the sole purpose of procreation. And you might, you're, you might have the kid who turns out like Marilyn Manson or something who's hanging off the, the rafters on a, on a spike. Like, you don't know because that's not, we can't, we can't force sex, sex, a certain type of sex or sexuality on our kids. You can't because that's very personal. 
the only thing that you can wish for is that you do not physically harm yourself during that. You know, no chickens and no blood. We're good. I don't care what else you do. You know what I'm saying? That's that's it. But I think we want to we want to police things way too much when it comes to our kids, and we feel like if our kids do something other than what we were taught or that we taught them that it's especially as adults, that is a reflection on us. It makes me a bad parent because my kid turned out gay. No, it makes you a bad parent if your kid turned out to be a serial killer. Maybe then you were the bad parent, but not because they're gay. <laughs> you know what I'm like, if you're, that might be a health issue. Right. You know, but, you know, if you, you're right, it might be a mental health issue. It has nothing to do with you as a parent, but we take that on and, you know, unfortunately it, comes back in the way it came with this little kid but he is in the custody the point, the point she's trying to make is it, the, the point you were trying to make was is that it has no reflection on you yes yeah just love them that that's yeah. pretty much it they are individual there's no reflection on you they're gonna live their own life how they want to yeah, yeah. And, and what our parents teach us once you turn eight to get me once you have done your job as a parent are you your job is to nurture love take care of that's your job and once you've done your job, once they hit technically 18, I mean, we still go beyond that, but we're just going to speak reality. Right. You have done your job. That is it. You are not responsible for anything. Anything else. Anything else. He's grown. He can make his own decision. So you've done your part. You've done, you put in the work. You've done everything you're supposed to. You're just supposed to love, nurture, and care. That's, all, that's how you're supposed to do it. Yeah, yeah. weird. Just weird. Yeah. Right. So we, you know, I know somebody got an attitude after we said that. Somebody got mad. Somebody got mad. I know they. Yeah. I know they need mad. You be strong. Some of them look, you know some of them Christians got to flee. And them the ones to be the most wary. The most wary. <laughs> Them be, the all, them be the ones that come out like you. You all in the church and they all in the, at the choir director and the and, and the music director and all this stuff. And mm -hmm. huh, who's whose child is that directing the choir? Because I huh? And sister okay. in the front row. Right? Well, serving the church and that they he could be gay as long as he show up every week for choir rehearsal and for church. To bring home the competition trophy and bring home the competition trophy as long as as long as that church is known for having the best choir we'll let that shit slide right we will let that, that slide <laughs> but if you are that a member of that church but if you're a member of that church and you have a gay child then they want to call you on the carpet so, like, so it, it, can my child be excused from these activities if they join the choir? Like, let me know something. We ain't gonna talk about black church because we're gonna get some folks. Um, we're gonna get some folks upset because we talked about church and Jesus last week, and uh, we ain't gonna do that again. Uh, two shows in a row. Okay, let's talk about episode 48 because. I think that that was one of the funniest times that I've ever had with y'all. And I kept watching that over and over again. And Brandy, when you said uh, you are not going to blaspheme for my Lord and Savior or something, you said right. what? <laughs> uh, what did she say? Dang it. Because this is one of my... It, when I tell you, I had to pause it because I was like, oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> now, this is my favorite part. Oh, when Jackie was threatening her son, I was like, please don't murder your son on camera. <laughs> like, it, it was, it fit the moment perfectly. We're talking about mothers who murder, and Jackie is threatening her son live on camera. It's like, like right, it's, it's like right on time. I mean, literally. I'm like, on hey, time. That just looks like I'm the field onions. Oh, your falsehood is against my Lord and personal Savior. <laughs> <laughs> you know, put it in the notes. <laughs> <laughs> she put that in the uh, comment. I put it in the comment because I was oh. like, I was like, what? My personal <laughs> like, what you not gonna do is have them falsehoods against my Lord and the Savior. I was like, Lord. <laughs> 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 Woo. Yeah. 
yeah, we had a good time with that episode. We had a good time. Um, again, you should, everyone is still feel uh, is is free to comment on any past episodes. We still get those uh, comments and notifications. Now, the next thing we want to talk about before we get to uh, Mr. Lopez is June. Was it June twenty first? Was it June or July that Victoria's earlier Secret? It was earlier this month. Uh, Karen. July 13th, July 12th or 13th. Yeah, I think it was in New Jersey. New Jersey. Oh, I was at the biannual. At the mall. There's a video that came out of this white woman like telling this black woman to turn her camera off and then having a whole ass tantrum Getting up meltdown. from the ground, a meltdown, getting up from the ground and then advancing on the black woman, telling her like she's attacking her. The black woman is like, no, you're attacking me. While chasing her. While chasing telling her. She's her. Attacking her. Telling her she's attacking So the white woman is advancing on the black woman saying, you're attacking me. And the black woman is, go- is walking backwards with the camera. She's like, I'm doing this because I want this recorded. This woman, let me tell you the, the worst part of this video. So she's like, she's filming me. She's filming me. She's filming me. She puts, please, please, she looks please. around when well, she's at the, still at the counter. She looks around and she has her bag in her hand. She throws her, she, she doesn't even throw her purse on the ground. She, her purse on the ground and then does no. this and lays out, but, and, but she makes it, it seem as if she fainted, but you just put that down there so your head could fall right on your back. She fell down and sent like this, yeah. this, then this. Yes, like it wasn't like oh, it was. And, and I, I don't understand why no one in that store that came way. to that woman's yes. defense. Not even the people in the store. I guess Victoria's Secret has had a policy. Well, that one black lady, except for that one black lady who the manager or something like kind of mm-hmm. stopped it, like that one moment. But you she know, pissed me off. This day ain't really do nothing though. Don't you don't piss me off. The it's when, when Sideshow Becky came over there and gonna come out. Just put the camera down because obviously she's having a miss. Bitch, get show. And then having, after it, she saw she was still doing too much because she looked around for people anyway. She was looking for people. She looked for validation the entire time. And then when she saw she was acting crazy, she walked off. I just, Becky walked off. Was like, look, I don't want no parts. But it was just a moment when she goes, just, just, just stop the camera because she's obviously mental state. We are always asked to not engage. Like, Anytime there's a situation like this, whether it's racially motivated or the person's just an asshole, doesn't matter. We are always, as black people, asked to just don't engage. I'm not engaging. No. I'm not engaging. I'm trying to get away. It's the other person. And then the cop is like, I don't have jurisdiction in the mall. What? So if I was stealing, did you have jurisdiction? This was a whole mess. And all the comments are like, she was, ha- maybe she was having um, a neuro something uh well, that's, like what, that. that's what she tried to say that she's she's been I'd be going through a lot and oh um, she was having anxiety and let me tell you something when you are whether it doesn't matter if you're going through some or not if you act like this and you always act like this your that's personality true. doesn't change because you're going through something you might mm-hmm. have an outburst against somebody that does something your your temper might be short I'm I am a testament to that. <clears throat> I will my temper will be short as as baby hair. But I will let you know, like it's not because I'm having a mental breakdown or whatever. I'm already like that. I already got a bad attitude. So if I'm going through something, my attitude gonna get a little bit worse. But it's not gonna be anything that you've never seen out of me before. So you <laughs> Obviously, that woman has done that before. Somebody she does, she has. So on TikTok, her, one of her old friends did a video about her, right. She's mm-hmm. like, "No, y'all, this is who she is. She's racist, and she does this." Mm. So she proceeds to tell a story with receipts. We're including text messages, pictures, um, group chat. 
her whole name, the phone, everything. She does receipts. But she is like this. She's like, no, this is who she is. I had to stop being her friend because of a really bad incident. But that's just who she is. That's who she so is. What was the incident? Um, the incident was um, she, for her, the girl in particular, threw a birthday party. She invited her because she was in, in a group chat. She's like, hey, y'all, we're going to have a birthday party. Meet me at this party bus and we're going to go to this restaurant, have dinner, go out, you know, go out and party. So the, the person who was driving the party bus was a black guy. So they said, first of all, she showed up an hour and a half late, which we would have left, I guess. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> so she said, as soon as she gets on the bus, she starts fussing at the driver about how he doesn't know where he's going. He doesn't know what he's doing. Um, calling him... Uh, you know, the, the N-word without the A uh, multiple times. And her friends are telling her, like, you need to sit down, you need to calm down. No, he needs to know his role. His role is being A and staying in the front seat. So she said by then she's uncomfortable. She tells her, look, you know, I don't think it's best that you continue with me. You can go hang out with them. But just don't hang out with me. So she then the next day shows a, a receipt text message receipt where she's like, look, I don't appreciate your behavior. I don't like the way you did it. You owe him an apology. Uh, we've all tipped him. You need to make sure that you're also including tip money to me. And, you know, like, you know, if this is how you're going to act. I don't want you hanging around me. They better gave she him told a big her, That baby told her in the group message. <laughs> Why are you getting so uptight about it? Oh, so she blocked him. She said, I just blocked her right then because I don't, I don't even care at that point. And she had a picture of them that night, like together at the park. Oh my god! Yeah, I just so don't understand is, why people that's why that's it's that's always an excuse why it's a mental <laughs> issue. Racism still, is not a mental issue. You you still know how to act. A mental issue does not mean you don't know how to act. You're you're still accountable <laughs> for what you say and what you do. Um the um the victim in this. Uh, her name was okay. So I, I just picked the Benadryl and like because I had allergic reaction and it ain't kicked in all the way. So you see me scratching. I I ain't coming down off no hair on. I just have a little bit of <laughs> allergic reaction. <laughs> hair on. Yeah, I like hair that. Pat, can I tell you how much I hate when she says it like that? Heron. That's Heron. like Heron. Heron. I've never heard it that way. Heron. Girl, that's a California thing. We know somebody you know they're on a Heron. Well, I hate that. Um, <laughs> oh, I can't stand it. The, the Karen's name is Abigail Elphick, and the victim in this case was um, Igioma Ukenta. Um, so, Miss Ukenta has set up a it was a GoFundMe to raise like twenty thousand dollars for legal fees. That thing is almost probably at a hundred thousand dollars by now. Um, I think it's over a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. So they up. most, most definitely. So more, more Karens, is. more Karens, and we keep seeing Karens on every social media platform. It's just ridiculous. But now let's go ahead and talk about another dirty old man who is probably still lurking around somewhere in South America. Mm -hmm. doing something um this uh is pedro alonzo lopez has to be the most prolific killer like damn sam little um none of these guys have anything on lopez he's, yeah, he's a lucky one too yeah, very lucky very I, and I don't. I didn't wear the shirt for, on, <laughs> for, for just for that. When she said it, it made sense. Um, <laughs> he admitted to he was convicted of at least fifty-seven murders, confessed to one hundred and ten, and that was just in Ecuador. But his total is thought to be around three hundred and fifty young girls. between Ecuador and his home country of Colombia. He was active yes. from 1969 to 2002. And possibly 2021. We just don't know where yet. He was released. He was like on a, some sort of program or something and he was gone. They gave him bail for $50. 50 <laughs> 
dollars. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. And he left. And they haven't seen him since. So basically his story begins. He was born in 1948. Um, his mother was supposedly a prostitute. He was like number seven child of 13. Uh, really nice boy. You know, really pleasant attitude or, or and everything. But he was bad as fuck. He was he was he was bad from the very beginning. Like at eight years old, he said, he said his mom was very abusive. Yes, he says that everyone was abusive. Yeah, he said that everyone was every adult in his life was being abusive to him. Everybody. So every down the line as he goes, there's an assault. So he's assaulted here. He's assaulted there, and it's always. Yeah. And I'm not saying this didn't happen, but every adult seems to have taking advantage of him um and being poor and abusive is they kind of go hand in hand um during the time when he was growing up there was a civil war in colombia it was crime capital of the world for decades um and so he grew up in the middle of a civil war situation um when he was eight years old he was caught having a sexual encounter with one of his sisters. His mom yeah. kicked him out of the house at eight years old. Eight. Eight. He's out on the streets. He was a quiet kid, so he's just kind of out there on the streets of Bogota, and he's just wherever. Um, so, you know, he gets into, like a, like, a peer group of other kids who are um, ru either runaways or orphans or whatever. They call him, I think the name for him was Gamines or Gamines or something like that. So he's approached when he's about, you know, between eight and 10, he's approached by this man who seems nice and, you know, tells him a great story that he's going to take him and take care of him. But he doesn't do that. He takes him to an abandoned house and he rapes him. So he goes back out onto the streets. So that's two adults that abuse him. Um, he goes, a wealthy American couple find him when he's about 10. They have a school for orphans in Columbia. Well, he's abused by some of the teachers there too. Um, so, you know, he just goes through life. Now, I don't, it doesn't say like if he was committing murders um, during his teen years, but he was definitely a criminal. Like he's car you know, car thief, carjacking or whatever. He finally gets arrested for that when he's about 21. He goes to prison. Guess what? He's assaulted in prison too. Of course. Of course. Um, he makes his way to Ecuador. Now, based on the number of murders that he's said that he committed, he would have had to have, had to have committed some of these murders prior to going to Ecuador in those teen years um, because there's no way that he committed almost 200 murders between the two countries um, and you know you know straddling from Ecuador to Colombia and you know between those years but what happens is you know he's just he's just doing his thing for years and years and years and years and years until the 70s um, in the 1970s he makes his way to Ecuador so between 1969 and 1970. Well, um, shit before 1969. Don't know what he did. Cause the only thing he was ever picked up for was this car, these car thefts. Um, but he goes to Ecuador and he starts murdering girls. Mm -hmm. It's caught by the by an Indian tribe, um, and I'm not able to pronounce the name of that tribe. But he gets caught raping a little girl of the tribe. They beat the shit out of him. <laughs> they catch him and they give him some tribal justice for real, for real. So some indigenous tribal just justice. No, well, they, they were about to kill him, but a Western missionary, white people, yeah, <laughs> white Christians. You know, they appealed to the to, to the, the indigenous people and said, no, don't do it. Just turn them over to the police. Well, they did. Um, and he basically walked and he started doing it again. So for years in, in Ecuador, in like Quito, Ecuador, 
uh, in some smaller vi villages around Quito, um, the, all these little girls go missing. These, these young girls are going missing all the time. People have no idea, no clue why their daughters are going missing. But here's the thing what he would do. He would kidnap them in the middle of the day. Like he's taking girls from like the corner store, the, the, the newspaper store, the chemist, like he's taking people like in the middle of the day. And the reason he said that he did that is because he wanted to see the fear in their faces while he was assaulting them. He didn't want like the nighttime to cover up what he would see in their faces as he assaulted and then killed them. Like he wanted them to see and he wanted to see it like, you know, so finally, um, he's caught attempting in like 1979, 1980, he's caught attempting to, um, kidnap a nine-year-old girl. And that's how he, you know, he's caught. And then he confesses to 57. Well, no, he confesses to like the whole 110. And, mm -hmm. but then they find 57 bodies. Mm -hmm. Like he takes them to 57 bodies, but they, based on the, the, his graphic descriptions of what he did and where he buried them, they're like, it's most likely that, yeah, he did these. And then that the animals is basically how he buried the other bodies was he would like bury them in the forest and under mud. And they were kind of like shallow graves. He didn't really take time to bury his victims with any sort of dignity. And, you know, so the animals could have gotten to them. And since it's rainforest, you know, the elements would have taken some of those bodies as well. But here's the thing. He's convicted of 57 of those 110. Mm -hmm. He only gets 16 years in total. The laws in Ecuador doesn't care if you kill one person or you kill 100. You're still the maximum sentence at that time. I don't know if it's changed. The maximum sentence was 16 years. And Pedro Lopez knew exactly what he was doing. He knew that by killing in Ecuador, he would only get a maximum of 16 years, no matter what he did. He got out in good behavior. Yes, he only did yeah. 14 of the 16 for good behavior. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? So it said that he basically got four, day, four, four days, or no, four months or something like that per victim. Four months, yeah, four months per victim. Horrible. Can you imagine? And then you let him go. So they let him go, out of, you know, 14 out of the 16 off of good behavior. But then he's also, then he's deported to Colombia where they pick him up on an old murder. And um, that was in 1994 when they let him out. So only did the 14 years. Let him out in 1994. He gets deported to Colombia. They pick him up. He gets convicted of one murder in Colombia. But then by 1999, Deuces. he's out. He gets bail. And he had for $50. Mental, they say he had mental health, mental health issues. Okay, so let's talk about that because that comes up a lot. Um, they let him go. He, they held him for about two years, two or three years, uh, because they said he was insane. Once he was declared sane, he's they're like, okay, he's fine. And then that's when they let him go on bail because now he can stand trial, but they gave him the $50 bill. But let's talk about the mental health issues because that does come up a lot um, when we're talking about murderers. And it, it, it kind of has to because you I, are you... Are, Is it just a mental health thing or is it insanity? When it comes to someone like a Lopez or who we were talking about last week. At all. You know, I think that he so many things, bad things happen to him. I was, like, um, but I think so many people had done him bad and he really didn't have an outlet 
um, and at those times he was vulnerable and couldn't fight back at any point that he was dealing with that by um, doing the same thing to other people. And he, I think he chose women instead of adults because he could overpower a child. Because even as an adult, he wasn't able to overpower the, the man that had raped him and the one, I mean, the, the man in the prison and all of that, you know, and then he was raped at the school he went to and his mama supposedly, he said, beat him up and did him poorly. So I think it was just he couldn't deal with um, those things happening to him. He couldn't fight back to, with the actual people that mm -hmm. he started doing it to people he could overpower. Sure. To get rid of that rage, that rage he put he put on someone else. That's what one I think. One he of the did. things that he said was that uh, he picked the girls in Ecuador over the girls in Colombia. He liked them better in Ecuador because they were more innocent. And the girls yeah. in Colombia were a little bit more dated, so they were kind of more street savvy, and they would be looking for someone like him to do something. But the girls in Ecuador... Um, were more innocent. So that's what he was attracted to. He was attracted to that innocence. And uh, also he said something to the effect, he did one interview in like 2002 or something like that. Uh, well, while he was, was it, he was, it, was he in prison? Mm -hmm. I think he, they yes. did it while he was in prison, but I think the interview was aired in 2002, but he was basically like, um, it was about his mom. He did to those girls what he couldn't do to his mother. Yep. Um, and his mom was supposedly a prostitute. So if you have 13 kids and you're poor, you're not able to take your Johns to another location. You don't have, you know, there's not a special trap house you can take them to. You're probably taking them in your living room or in the same bedroom as your, where your kids are sleeping. Um, so, you know, if he saw this this activity, then that would partially explain why he was able to have a sexual encounter with his younger sister when he was eight years old. Eight. Because honestly, what eight year old can articulate that much what sex is and how to do it? At, at, you know, at that age where they would know that that's what they're doing, unless they did that before. Uh, the innocent girls. Speaking of the innocent girls, he would lure them by asking them. Maybe he couldn't lure the other ones because they were more street smart and would be like, "Oh no!" Like you know, like if somebody came up to, I mean, my kid would even go with somebody he knew because I didn't say he could go. He totally right. ignored it. Like I don't care what you said, and they she he knew this person very well. Would not go. I mean, would not. She left him there because I didn't tell. Because you didn't him say. That. And he didn't go anywhere. So he would say anything like, oh, will you help me with something? I'm trying to sell this or, you know, little things to try to lure them into going with him. And maybe them girls in his hometown was too street savvy. And they would have been like, like, nah, bro, we ain't we try, ain't trying to roll with you like that. Right. They would have had it's a not, it's not scary in the eyes. No, um, you they would have had a similar experience in, in, in Colombia as he did, because they were living through the Civil War and through all of that. So they would have been very wary of strangers or, or anyone because it was kind of like a dog eat dog world during that time. So those girls in Columbia were like, mm -mm, no. And also they would have known who he was. Yeah. They would have known exactly who he was. If he was running the streets, you know, his mom kicked him out, but it's not like he went to another country at eight. He was still on just around in the streets. So you would have known what he did. Um, if he's running around with a pack of kids like himself, everyone knows what he's doing and what they're doing to each other and to other people. So those girls would have been very wary of those kinds of, uh, group, you know, peer groups walking the around the street. The weirdo, the neighborhood that they say, you know, don't be over there by his fence or, yep. you know, they would probably, they would have known. Right. That. And like you said, Brandy, he wasn't a very large physically a large person and he wasn't um and it's, it's strange to say because ted bundy had the same kind of look he wasn't unattractive if you look at his younger pictures but maybe it's because i I'm mean looking at that. 
his mouth was a little grouchy. Right. But I'm just saying, like, Thank in you. the grand scheme of things, he wasn't an ogre he looking guy. Yeah. I mean, he, was, he, he was missing one, two there or everywhere. But I mean, if he was poor, then it probably more than more than half the population was missing a few in the front. So what I'm saying is he wasn't uh, an off-putting guy just to look at him like face to face. It wouldn't have been like a, he looked like a leather face type of thing. You know what I mean? So those girls and the young girls in Ecuador, he might have appealed to them because he, you know, he would have had like a regular, regular, regular kind of face. And not yeah, he anything have, like threatening. horrible face. It's not well, horrible. He had a non-threatening not, face, not and he wasn't. Me, he was right. But it's he, not horrible. He wasn't physically large to and looming, um, to you know to scare the young girls. You know he was damn near their size. So these girls weren't like little teeny, you know, girls. These were like ten, uh -huh. eleven around. The bad thing about this case that kind of really pissed me off was that all these girls were coming up missing, and we see this a lot with our girls. Oh, they ran away. They didn't do anything about looking for these girls until a more well-off man, the, the baker or whatever he was, his child came up missing. And all of a sudden, oh, we need to, we need to serve mm -hmm. and, and investigate this case. Yet all these other poor children just ran away like we're not even going to look into it right we're not even going to look for her we're not even going to look hundreds, for her away. hundreds dozens of girls not just a handful but you're talking about dozens and dozens upon dozens of young girls and no one said anything because they were of lower class. If you think about it, look at what's happening mm. or what has happened in Chicago. Chicago has a horrible, horrible rate of young girls going missing, young black girls going missing. They don't talk about it. Atlanta, Georgia is one of the worst places for, for human trafficking of young black girls out of Atlanta. You don't hear about that. Also a lot mm. of uh, Native American women are coming up dead or missing and, and going missing yeah. yes in the u.s mm -hmm. as well as canada but yeah I was you know, canada. canada is horrible yeah canada is horrible, horrible so canada. yeah yes but is. like randy said because they were poor it took i think the guy was a baker or something like that and his nine-year-old daughter nine or ten-year-old daughter goes missing and that's when they start to investigate the same thing happened when he was um the um the the indigenous tribe where they beat the hell out of him uh yeah. you know like they there a couple of their girls had gone missing and no one did anything because they were indians no one did anything until they started to beat the hell out of him and they were going to burn his ass up and then the missionary came through and was like just turn him over to the place and he got nothing he got like four years i think uh he got towed up when they found they found him Somebody recognized him in the market area and all the parents jumped. I, I think he got beat then. They just didn't he tell did. him. Yeah, he probably yeah, got beat. A righteous, a a righteous down. beat down. So, so the police came. I'm pretty sure he probably got some licks then too. Right. So like with it, whatever they do it with. Let's see here. So um no, yeah. He in 1998, after he was deported back to Columbia. Uh, no, in 1994, after he was declared, uh, deported back to Columbia, he was put in the psychiatric ward of a hospital, Bogota hospital. Um, 1998, he was declared sane and released on a $50 bond. And basically he's just in the wind somewhere. And he's actually on Interpol's list of people to find. Um, what do you think happened to him? He's hiding now. I would think he's dead. Like he hasn't passed away. I would well, by think now he's probably, dead. Yeah, well, now he's probably, he's probably dead. And the reason I would I say that, right, I say that because someone who, like him is not going to stop killing. He won't stop then killing. The last time anyone saw him was when he went by his mom's to see her, and he, they said he had a, a bed and a chair, and um, he took her stuff outside sold it kept the money and and wrote out mama ain't had nothing and that's the last time they saw him yeah 
I, I would think that he's dead um, because I don't think that someone like him would stop killing because there's still he's obviously what he did the pettiness that he did to his mom at the end he still has those feelings of rage and anger and abandonment and all those things against his mom and there is an endless supply of young girls in this world yeah. there are more girls than there are boys so anywhere he would have went he would have had the opportunity to well, I, I think could totally still be alive because he's he killed 300 people without anybody noticing. Right. And he doesn't have one of those faces that really sticks out in the crowd. Like he doesn't blend very well. He has a, a, a Joe Schmo, no, no Q public kind of face in a he can be Spanish world. Somebody, somebody's market selling bread or, or something. And the whole time, Killing girls left and right. We just he looks like know. the you know he could be the lotus man. He could be the paletas man. He you know any yeah, of that. Yeah, I didn't. Mm -hmm. you know. I don't say so corn, but I chose bread. What did you say? Yeah. I I was gonna say corn, but I just said bread instead. <laughs> oh, but yeah, he could <laughs> oh, be because anywhere. I said lotus. <laughs> yeah, he he killed three hundred girls, and they only found fifty seven. And he was doing this for we don't know how long he was killing for. So he could totally be somewhere, and you know he could be in the United States for all we know. Yeah, it's just crazy that someone who admitted to killing this many people only did fourteen years. Like y'all couldn't change the law, make an exception. Fourteen years. That's every crazy. time, like you said, Brandy, he's lucky because every time he went to jail, they let his ass out. So even the Colombian government, you knew what he had done in Ecuador. You actually knew what he did in your country. You just didn't convict him for it. And you let him out on bail for $50? $50. $50. Did he, he did he ever like have well I guess he couldn't have like a woman friend or something because he was too busy killing. But I didn't see anything that said that he had any friends or you know he was in contact with any family members. He's just like a lone guy. Yeah, other than um his you know the gamines or whatever when he was young, um in his teen years, they don't mention any sort of other peers or relationships that he would have had. I don't think that he would have been ma able to maintain any sort of intimate, intimate relationship. No, I don't I think, think he wanted one. Yeah, I think well, I, I just don't think he knew what intimacy was. Intimacy, intimacy is something that you learn. Um, and one of the ways that you learn intimacy is watching your parents. And if your mom's a prostitute, there's no intimacy there. That's an exchange. And if she's abusive, there's again none there. He, you know, the man who abused him when he was ten the missionaries from America. So his relationships all ended in abuse and assault. So the, he doesn't know what intimacy is. He doesn't know what empathy is. I think that's why he was able to kill those girls and take such pleasure from it is because he did not know what empathy was. He never, no one ever gave him any, so he wasn't trying to extend it himself. So yeah, I, I don't think that he knew uh, how to maintain a relationship and also he would have been very wary of people wanting to come into his life because everyone who came into his life ended up hurting him so yeah. i'm not gonna you know cultivate any relationship if i'm just gonna get hurt and not just my heart broken i'm really somebody's gonna sodomize me somebody so i'm just gonna do it to somebody else yeah I, and I have to wonder as well why he didn't do it to boys. Yeah, because I know he got raped. Because so maybe maybe he's because he's, he wasn't gay, he thought. I'm not gay, so I'm just going to rape girls? I don't, I don't know. But most of his sexual assaults were from males. Yeah, but that wasn't wanted. But would you want to get revenge on males? Because the girls never did anything to you. I mean, I don't know the mind of a killer. I'm just thinking he, he was heterosexual. <laughs> and, you know. 
Maybe boys kind of overpowered him. He, he looked she pretty. Was so crazy. I'm just saying. I don't know. I don't know. But he's somewhere. Pedro Alonso Lopez is somewhere lurking around. The monster of the Andes is still possibly lurking around here um, in advanced age um, in his 70s Yikes. at this point. Um, he was born in 1948, so he would be how old right now? 70 something. 70. 72, okay. 73, 74? Yeah, because I, I, right I think it would be like 73, something like that. So just <laughs> old ass man. But still capable, even I think at that age of of killing. Very much so. That's if he I doesn't just, have no kind of health issues or anything. Right. So I just wonder, like, you know, in a in couple of years, are we going to find mass grace? Because he pretty much buried those girls in the same place. Like he was going, he was like a, a wild spot. wild animal going back to the same spot mm -hmm. or the yeah. same type of spot. Like he would use like underpass. Um, you know, underpasses of roads and like uh, little creeks and rivers and stuff. So I just wonder, like, are you are they going to find some you know area like the like the Green River Killer where you know someone goes back time and time again to bury their victims in the same spot? You might have settled down with old nice woman, and Wait, she don't you? know about that. Ugh. Do you think it's possible not to know nowadays, though? Do you think this is possible not to know if your partner well, is... I didn't know about it until you said to do this story. You're not dating him. Yeah, if she had heard the story, she wouldn't know either. But, but I mean, if, 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 they're, like if he's in the same spot... Though? Well, what if he was in the same, you know, country? And then, you know, if he's known... What if he's still in the same spot? Mm -hmm. He used a different name, maybe cut his hair or something to look a little different. I don't know. I mean, don't you look up people, your partners, and find out they got a jail record, whatever, you know, what's you going on? I know I do that because I'm nosy. And you probably do it too because you nosy too. Everybody right. don't know how to do Because I'm, I'm going to look. She's a nice little woman, you know. She works in the village. She's a seamstress working in the village, a smaller area. And um, she don't know nothing about him. <laughs> I just, I just, I really find it hard, like, that no one, the village grapevine would, would, wouldn't say, but you know who that is. Oh, some ways off, but, um, I mean, if your boo came to you, with a different name and a new area and he was all oh Bran, you know, we gotta be together and all this stuff and he's he's nice and all that. You wouldn't know because everybody who knows is back somewhere wherever he's from. He done changed his name, you know, and got his grill fixed and you thinking he's a big thing and the whole time he done killed three hundred folks. I'm I'm a bit I'm, too, I'm a bit too suspicious for that though. How many women, like we, from doing these stories, how many women find out their husbands are serial killers and they had no freaking idea? That's true. Oh, he was so nice. He was so loving. I would have never thought that. He, you know, he never put a hand on me ever and all of this stuff. I would. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think that, you know, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. So I'm way too suspicious to to let that go because I'd be looking for like some is some is up with dude like something is up like I need a second opinion you know what I'm saying like I need I need a life you do that with regular just regular folks that's what I'm saying <laughs> so everybody ain't like you looking for something oh I can't be with him because he got a mole on his cheek it might be cancerous. <laughs> I ain't got no good health insurance. I can't take off work to help to, to take care of them. I gotta find me somebody else. No, that's you because you're you, that would be you. I'd say he got a mole on his cheek, and that means he's a warlock or some shit like that. Um, you know that that that's <laughs> not a, you know like that's not a good sign. You know, is Brandy? Okay, let me tell you. Okay, now we're I'm off the warlock. subject. 
because we're all the way off the subject. So Brandy has this thing about what is it? Necks not being worthy, trustworthy, an untrustworthy neck. If you can't, she has this thing about like if you can't turn your neck all the way around. No, if you turn your whole body like this instead of just going like this, you're untrustworthy. So if he was doing that, oh no, we can be together. That would let me know he's into some foolishness. So if I would have told you that my current, my current, my my significant other right now, that when I met him, he he turned his body all the way around like that, would you would have told me to leave him alone? Girl, I would have been like, no. Mm -mm. And when I <laughs> every time I saw him, I'll be looking at him like this. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Brad, look at him. It's all untrustworthy. So there are certain... So that is to say, audience, that there are certain signs that you should look for in untrustworthy people. One of them is the fact that if you turn your whole body around just to turn like this and you don't have a back brace on, then you are untrustworthy. That is tip number one from Black Coffee and Crime. Hand me the salt instead of hand the salt. That's, That's not even comfortable. Right. Untrustworthy. And you just turning your waist, not your whole body, Ooh. just your waist. Jackie, why did you demonstrate? Why did you why did you do it? Oh, that is so weird. Look at it. Who does this? Untrustworthy. <laughs> Untrust you know what? I'm glad you told me. Because now when they do it, I'm be like this. So tip number one in spotting untrustworthy people from black coffee and crime is they turn the entire body left to right at the waist instead of at the neck when turning uh, turning in the opposite direction. <laughs> and maybe Pedro Lopez doesn't have that problem, so no one spotted that. He doesn't have any back problems, so no one spotted that part. Or everybody don't know about that. See, Jackie didn't know, but she's going to be looking out now. Is. And you, be like, you know, you already be like this. I already can't. I already don't know how to hide my expression. There's something about so the person that Really, whatever I feel reads right here. So if you look untrustworthy, I'm gonna be doing it. You know, there's something <laughs> about them. I just can't figure it out. It's just I don't trust them. They're just it's something. Jackie, wow. Jackie is absolutely correct in the fact that her face stays like that. Um, I've been in meetings with Jackie and in assemblies and in company like meetings or whatever with Jackie, and I have had to tap her. Or and if she's like, sitting across the room from me, or text out, her, if she's sitting across the room from me, I have had to text her like, girl, fix your face. I thought that I had, be, yeah, I mean, she's locked in that's my and I face. have to tell her like, your face, get your face. That's hard <laughs> to do sometimes. See, for me, it's my it's, mouth. It's very hard. I'm going to speak yeah, up. Brandy's, Brandy's face, you know, it's not going to change. It's going to stay. As soon as you get through talking, well, and now, you know, <laughs> I, I was just listening to her earlier about her voice not able to elevate. So she she acts like a kid, but a kid. It's 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 that it's just a smooth. It's a, one of the smoothest tones you've ever heard. It's just smooth. And this is her after she's been looking like this in our meeting. Those that's a serial killer look. So you mean to tell me? That's Pedro, right? But there. this is this and this. Okay, but that doesn't add up. But if she walk, baby. First of all, I don't know how she logically moves that fast and learn, but baby, she been in a baby, they be having a question <laughs> everything they ever thought. She'd be like, Well, if you have looked at this way, because this doesn't it doesn't make sense. I just want to know why. Make sense. Why 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 did you what who came up with this? She's that person who came up with this process. Why did it no means but this me, Brandy, why she looking this way, talking to them all over here like this, next to her. I know it's noticeable because I'm doing this number right here. That I just want to know why. Why did it change? Why did the process change? And what going going forward, how how is this going to benefit anybody that actually does the work? Well, you know, That's with best for the company, what is it best for the people who do the work? If it's not best for the people who do the work and we're still getting the numbers, then it doesn't make sense to change the policy. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that's the Pedro look. <laughs> no emotion, just looking. 
<laughs> I think it might be a Sagittarian thing. I think it definitely is a Sagittarian. Well, that's thing. What, what Pedro is. Um, let me look no, up Pedro, okay, I, on the list of serial killers. So let me look. Me serial and Pedro born on, we both have the same birthday. What? What? What's y'all sign? Libra. Don't wow. be too happy talking about Pedro. And you Pedro, doing that. no, and this is why I always tell people: do not trust a Libra man. You trust Libra women. That's don't don't say that because my my you don't trust my significant other is a Libra. We don't count. If they good, and if he turns that the way, he's he untrustworthy. Yeah. Okay. Don't, don't, so don't Ted Bundy. Uh, Sagittarius, Charles Manson, no, no, most of them Scorpio, are. most of them, uh, the Golden State Killer, Scorpio. Um, uh, let me see. I rebuke all them Scorpios, I rebuke it in the name of the Lord. <laughs> uh, let's see who else. Um, where who Adolfo Constanzo? Did we do Adolfo Constanzo? Mm -mm. Oh, who that? He's a Scorpio. He's the guy who was like into some um, Santo Santo. Oh, he was into some sort of voodoo type thing, and he went to Mexico. He was in with the cartels, and he was like killing people and boiling them and shit. He's a Scorpio. You said they were doing what? Yes, he was like into some strange Haitian voodoo type thing in Mexico, and he was like selling drugs to the cartel, and he was cutting up Americans and everybody else and boiling them, eating them and shit. Adolfo Constanzo, Scorpio, Nanny Doss, oh, he Nanny Doss, the, one of the old lady killers, Scorpio, Scorpio. Um, I'm the Alton, I'm the nice Alton I'm the Coleman nice. of Coleman and Brown, Scorpio. Oh, Carl Eugene Watts. Scorpio. Scorpio. Carl Eugene Watts. Scorpio. What? That's not surprising. I, I think uh, you just coming out picking the Scorpios. No. Everybody else. Okay, so this is from News Hub. Um, this year's uh, July fifth, two thousand twenty-one. And it claims that it says, while well, this is directly from the article, it says, while Scorpios often get gets a bad rap, it seems like Gemini, Pisces, and Virgo, and Sagittarius are the star signs to watch out for when it comes to serial killers. So I'll just say, Sagittarius. Um, Sagittarius is the only people I know that keep a straight face through everything. Through everything, they can have a straight face. Through everything. Like this. Bad news, good news, everything like this. It's just news. Get, her way. It's just news. Okay, so look. I then I literally tell Jamara, why are you so emotionless? She's like, no, I'm emotions. I feel it. <laughs> look at why she's looking like that. That's yeah, we gotta watch and pray over Brandon. Okay, so Gemini's Jeffrey Dahmer, Mary Bell, Kenneth Bianchi. Pisces, Don Wayne Gacy, Richard Ramirez, and Donald Henry Gaskins. Ed Gein, Terry Blair, Dean Carter were uh, Virgos. Ted Bundy, George Chapman, and Timothy uh, Kashir are Sagittarius. And that's not, so there's killers for every sign, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but most of y'all are Scorpios. Read the blood of Jesus. Our <laughs> our what you're trying to say. Brandy, a Scorpio? Yes. Makes sense. You're going to say makes sense for everybody. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> makes sense for everybody and every sign. No, just the ones that I interact with the most, which are Sagittarius, and Scorpios, and Libras. Yeah, but this is a good, I'm not crazy. This is who I, these are the people I literally only find these signs. Not, these are the people that come to me. I'm just a very nice Christian young lady. You are. Oh, yeah. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we will go ahead and conclude today's show. I feel a little bit of famous. Thank you, you so much for you... joining us for episode 49. BW, you have Scorpio traits. I'm so sorry, baby. And you're sweet as pie. I'm not saying you're not, Please but you definitely. 
sweet as a peach. You definitely have the traits. Yes. You know. It's okay, man. I think we should do a future show about our Zodiac like and the serial killers that fall Maybe. underneath them. Maybe we should do that. Uh, so, uh, Milestone coming up next week is going to be episode 50. So, 50 episodes in this, you know, 50 episodes. Oh, I think that's pretty awesome. I think it's pretty awesome. So, in the next week, if you guys have, I'm going to just keep on going past that. Uh, if anyone has any suggestions of what we can do, I do. I do. So you just gotta keep walking. You just gotta keep working through Brandy. Just keep it going. Um, no, anybody has any suggestions of what? That's the non-trustworthy. It's not trustworthy at all. Um, but, any suggestions of what we should do for episode fifty? Please let us know. Info at blackcoffeecrime.com or on Instagram or Facebook at Black Coffee Crime. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Bye, y'all. Cannot. That was a demonstration of the untrustworthy. Yeah. <laughs> we always get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs>